Good day, my scholars. You are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT past question for the subject Chemistry, the year 2013. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us, and we will be right back. channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 1 to 23 so join me as we start with question number one the presence of an impurity in substance will cause the melting point to do what is going to make the melting point to reduce okay but if it is um the boiling point is going to make it increase you can notice this um deviations or changes when it comes to the melting point and boiling point of seawater okay so Definitely, the presence of an impurity in substance will cause the melting point to do it. Reduce option B is the correct option. Question 2. What volume of carbon 2 oxide is produced by reacting excess carbon with 10 dm cube of oxygen? So, at first, you have to drive out or correctly define the equation of the reaction. When you do that, you realize that um, two moles of carbon react with one mole of oxygen to give you, okay, um, then two moles of carbon to oxide. So, that tells you that if we are having 10 for oxygen, that would be times 2 to give you carbon to oxide. So, using the equation of the reaction, we can confidently tell that the correct option here is option B for 20 dm cube. Question 3. The radioisotope used in industrial radiography for the rapid checking of faults in words and casting is what is COBA-60. So when we point to iodine and phosphorus, talking about treatment of the cancer of the thyroid gland and leukemia. All right, so the correct option is option C for COBA-60. Question four. The shape of the carbon dioxide molecule is what? Okay, its shape is linear. Pyramidia, you're talking about um, trigonal pyramidia, you're talking about ammonia. All right, angular, we're talking about water. So the correct option here is option B for linear shape. Question five. Which of the following molecules is held together by hydrogen bond? Okay, so um, hydrogen bond is, is the type that is a weak dipole dipole attraction and um, the unusual high boiling point that we notice in water, we notice in ammonia, and in this. Okay, so this tells you that the correct option that we're looking for is option D. Um, which of the following molecules is held together by the hydrogen bond? B. So this is where you find the correct option. Once again, the correct option is option D. Number six. The bond formed between two elements with electronic configurations. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So, the first thing we have to do, we have to identify this element, okay? So this is 2 plus 2, that is 4, plus 6, that is 10, plus 2, that is 12. You tell me that this element has the atomic number of 12. So what element is that? That is magnesium. Then let's identify this. 2, 2, that is 4, plus 4, that is 8. So this is magnesium, this is oxygen. So this kind of bond, that will be formed or the bond formed between them will be electrovalent or ionic so the correct option is option d for ionic do not forget that you can get the my school mobile app for your android devices via play store or clicking on the link in the description below or you can get the my school software all right so that is for your laptop all you just need to do click on that link so join me as we solve question seven the constituent of air that acts as a diluent is what? So, looking at the usefulness or the function of diluents in pharmaceutical um, sector or pharmaceutical setting, okay, one of those um, or some of those properties that we are looking at for is that such constituent must be inert, okay, it must be non-toxic and it should be stable. So, what we are talking about basically here, yeah, we are talking about nitrogen. Nitrogen carries. Um, some of these properties I just shared is in that it is not toxic. So option A is the correct option. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button. 
and always tap on bell notification so you can get alert immediately we upload the next video clip just for you question eight steam changes the color of anhydrous copper two chloride from what okay so we are talking about um changing the color from blue all right to pink hydrate okay blue to pink that is option c on that sense that we can use is anhydrous cuso4 okay from white to blue so but right there we are talking about anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride so that will be from blue to pink hydrate so the correct option is option c question nine an example of a hygroscopic substance is what so when you say a substance is hygroscopic that means it's absorbed water when it's exposed to the surrounding okay but it doesn't turn into a solution if it is solid it can become sticky so such perfect example that we can present in the options provided is copper 2 oxide and we find that in option a so option a is the correct option question 10 the solvent used for removing grease stain is what? It's actually aqueous ammonia. Okay, we can also use it. Um, we use it to remove green stain, oil stain as well. Also, it's, um, aqueous ammonia can also be used. I mean, softening temporarily hard water. So, the correct option here is option B for ammonia solution. Number eleven. In a water body, too much sewage leads to what? Okay, so when you look at the composition of sewage, it gives you a lot of information on what will take place. Okay, so when there is too much sewage, what will happen is we'll be talking about increase in bacterial population, the activity, the metabolic activity. So this in turn um, make them to use up the oxygen content in the water. So this can tell us clearly that. In a water body, too much sewage leads to what? It leads to an increase in the bacterial population, which reduces the level of oxygen in the water. So, the correct option here is option C for an increase in the bacterial population, which uses up the oxygen in the water. So, option C is the option we're looking for. Question 12. 10.0 dm cube of water was added to 2.0 dm cube of 2.5 dm cube solution of HCl, hydrochloric acid. Okay. So, what is the concentration of the final solution in mole per dm cube? So, we just have to use um, the formula that we know. C1, V1 equals to C2, V2. Okay. So, right there from the question, we are asked to look for C2. Okay. That's the final concentration. So, remember our C1 is given as 2.0. From the question, it reads, was added to 2.0 mole per dm cube. So, we have 2.0 times the initial volume is 2.5. Okay. Which is equals to the final concentration multiplies, okay, the volume. So, the volume now is given as 12.5 out. 10.0 dm cube of water was added to 2.5 dm cube solution of HCl. So that makes 12.5. So we are dividing both sides by 12.5. So 2.5 here, 2.5, that's 1. So 2 divided by 5, that is 0 0.4. So this is what we are looking for. Let's go back to the screen and see if we can secure the correct option. So if we look through the options provided, we find that in option A. So option A is the correct option. Number 13. Three drops of 1.0 mole per dm cube solution of HCl was added to 20 cm cube of a solution of pH 6.4. The pH of the resulting solution will be what? Okay, so at first we see the pH 6.4. That tells you that it is um, it is acidic. Okay, even though it is not um, that concentrated, but of course it's acidic. Okay, when it is seven, that is neutral. Beyond seven, you are talking about alkalinity. So already we are told that this solution is acidic. All right. So if we are now adding more acid to it, it is going to become more concentrated. Okay, and that tells you that the pH value will reduce. That is, it's going to move towards being more acidic. So definitely what we are talking about is that the pH of the resulting solution would be less than 6.4. So the correct option is option B. Question 14. Uh, which of the following substances is not a salt? Okay, so, you know, we have normal salt, we have double salt, and what have you. So all of, of these options provided 
the correct option is aluminum oxide okay sometimes it's referred to as alumina all right it's a white um powder almost insoluble in water and is uh, of course amphoteric in nature so the correct option here is option a for aluminum oxide number 15 a new soluble source can be prepared by what? Okay, we have two methods that we can present right now. We have double decomposition or the direct combination of the constituent elements. So the correct option here is option B for double decomposition. Question 16. We have um, two moles of water added to two moles of fluorine gas. Okay, so then we have the product side. So in the reaction above, the substance that is being reduced is what? At first, we should know that oxidizing agents, they are being reduced. And we can define oxidizing agents through the concept of that they accept hydrogen. And generally, oxidizing agents, once again, they are being reduced. So, and fluorine is a good oxidizing agent, at least in the context of the equation we examine. So, the correct option, once again, is option C for fluorine gas. It's possible that you may have questions you'd like to ask. All you need to do is to click on that link in the description below. It's going to move you to the My School website where you can ask your questions and our solution providers are waiting right there to help you out. So why not ask those questions? Join me as we solve question 17. In an electrochemical cell, polarization is caused by what? So at first, the concept polarization describes the formation of hydrogen gas bubbles around the copper plate of a simple cell. So I just mentioned hydrogen. So the correct option is option D for hydrogen. Perhaps you have better steps, explanations to any of the questions we've tackled so far. Please, we are so interested in knowing all you need to do. Use the comment section below. Indicate the question number and the explanations or solution you'd like to share. Question 18. In an endothermic reaction, if there is a loss in entropy, the reaction would do what? So, uh, we can relate entropy using the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so this implies that for a reaction to be spontaneous, there must be an increase in entropy. So, right now we are having a reversal. Therefore, we can imply that the reaction will not be spontaneous. So, the correct option will be option C, that the reaction will not be spontaneous. Question 19. The minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place is what? That is the activation energy. When you talk about ionization energy, you're talking about a gaseous atom. So you're talking about that energy required to remove an electron from it. So the correct option here is option C for activation energy. Question 20. Which of the following compounds is a neutral oxide? So when we refer to neutral oxide, we are looking at oxides that are neither acidic nor basic in properties. So, and again, neutral oxide, they are neutral to litmus paper or litmus tests. So all of these that we have are both from option A to option C, they are acidic in nature. When we come down to option D, carbon 2 oxide, it is an example of neutral oxide so the correct option here is option d for carbon 2 oxide question 21 in the laboratory preparation of ammonia the flux is placed in a slanted position so as to do what okay uh, it is being slanted so that the water formed in the course of the reaction does not trickle back into the hot parts of the flux okay and this can lead to cracking so if we scan through the options provided we'll see that in option a so as to prevent condensed water from breaking the reaction flux. So option A is the correct option. Question 22. Which of the gases is employed as an anesthesia? Okay, so uh, when we look at ammonia, found in option C, it is used as a solvent in laundry, okay, to remove grease, oil stains, and what have you, to soften temporarily hard water. Uh, when we look at nitrogen, one oxide in option A, Okay, it's used as a mid anesthesia in minor surgeries like dental surgery and what have you. So the correct option here is option A. 23. Sulfur so oxide is a strong reducing agent in the presence of water due to the formation of water. You're talking about the formation of triazosulfate for salt. Okay, this readily donates um, to oxidizing agents. All right. So the correct option once again is option D for triazosulfate four. 
Okay, so three, two, minus. That's a molecular representation. We've come to the end of this video segment, but there are definitely more interesting and interactive segments to come. All you need to do to keep in touch is to hit the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video clip just for you.